This is a Sundancer refrigerator freezer and I refer to it as a refrigerator and freezer because it can be either one. In the bottom corner is a thermostat and there's a thermostat for the refrigerator and a thermostat for the freezer. So when you purchase this refrigerator, if you want to make it a freezer, you just have to quickly replace this thermostat and it'll become a freezer. And again, you can switch it back to refrigerator. Most people in an off-grid application would like this to be a freezer. They can keep ice and uh, frozen meats in it. And it's, uh, I think, will be a lot more functional than a refrigerator. You can see how heavily insulated it is. And this is the 50 liter version. This is the smallest one Sundancer makes. A 50 liter is about 2.8 cubic feet. Uh, it's just about right for somebody either living off grid or as a backup refrigerator or freezer in a home that's still connected to the grid. So we're gonna connect it to a battery first and I'll show you how to make those connections. To connect a DC refrigerator or freezer to battery power is a fairly simple process. This is the power wire coming out of the back of the refrigerator. It has a red and a black color wire. The red is going to be our positive connection. The black will be our negative connection. We also want to have some type of protection for the wiring, so we have an inline fuse. These are uh, automotive type fuses, and these devices are fairly easy to find at any um, automotive at an RV store. So we're gonna take the positive connector and connect it to the positive wire of the refrigerator. Again, we're using our crimper. All right, now we have a terminal I've already prepared to connect to the positive of the battery, which is easy to do here. We want to make sure it's tight. If you have a loose battery connection, it can overheat. Now here's our negative connection. So we'll add a, another ring terminal. This is our negative post. Now the refrigerator is operating. We don't have to uh, turn anything on or off. We already have the thermostat set, so it's, it's actually running right now. Now, if we make this a freezer, we probably want a little bit more battery in reserve. So in that case, we would use two golf cart batteries, which I have here. These are also uh, sealed batteries. And um, they're both six volt. So as you see, we have them connected positive and negative to make 12 volts total. So I would be making the same connections to the negative and positive terminals as I have on this smaller uh, group 31 battery. Now, that has given us a functioning freezer or refrigerator running off of battery power but obviously it's going to run down after a, a day or two. So we need some way to charge the battery up again. I'm going to be using a battery tender. This is their larger size unit and it is available with two different types of terminations. We're not gonna be using the alligator Connections, connections because it's uh, not the best way for a permanent connection. We're going to be using their ring terminals. Again, this easy to switch. It also has the inline fuse, red positive, black negative. So we're going to reconnect to our battery.
now what we're doing is we're letting the, the grid, when it's operating, plug this in. So the grid is charging the battery, the battery is running the refrigerator, and um, with this particular size battery tender, it is putting more power into the system than the battery is actually discharging. So while the grid is available, the battery is always staying fully charged. And we're essentially running a DC refrigerator or freezer off of the AC grid. And the nice thing about this arrangement is if the grid goes down, we still are, are going to continue to operate off the battery power and we don't have to turn anything on or off. This is an automatic way to switch over to know that this unit is always going to be running uh, even when the grid goes down as long as we have any charge left in the batteries. Now the next video I'm going to be showing part two will be how we can charge this battery using a solar system and that way we can continue to operate this unit indefinitely if the grid is down for an extended period of time.